seen a local artist, Jonathan Green, who is a very established artist here in Charleston, and he will be interviewed by uh, Mark Sloan. Uh, they're going to talk about his childhood, his artistic practice, and then more importantly, a uh, big upcoming pro or a big project that he's been working on called the Low Country Rice Culture Project. After the interview, there will be a reception. Uh, reception at <clears throat> in the Hill Gallery, sponsored by Middleton Place Restaurant and uh, Kudzu Bakery. The last event for this year is taking place on December 4. Here in the galleries, it will be a curator-led tour of the Giamatti Show and the Picasso Show, and it will be led by Mark Sloan, who is the director and the senior curator here. The event is for members only, so if you are not a member, if you didn't join on Friday during our annual moon party, this is a great time to become a member of the Halsey. The Curator Love Tours are a wonderful opportunity to get insider knowledge on the exhibitions, kind of learn, you know, why we pair Giamatti with Picasso, why did we find Giamatti, we find him on Facebook actually, so if you want to learn about that, um, come to the event. And it's taking place here at 6 p.m. on December 4. Uh, lastly, there is literature on your seats. Take it home, learn more about the exhibitions, learn more about who we are, what we do, and uh, enjoy this great morning.
blank Lichtenstein note cards if you want to write some people. And you want a beginner's art kit. I see some colored pencils in there. You got flip book and tote bag. <laughs> you win. Um, all from Arts and Craftsmen. Thank you so much, guys. Um, and then everyone else is standing up. It should be 10 of you. So maybe some of you guys didn't look too hard on your chair. Or maybe there's players next to you. I don't know. But you win a free candle making class at Candlefish, which is awesome. So go make some candle. I have two. And my house smells way better than it ever. <laughs> okay, so while we're doing that, um, also thank you so much to Tony Tazarati. Is that how you say your name? I yes. think so. He's in videography. He's amazing. Thank you so much. And Chloe takes all of our photos. She takes our photos. Um, we have a smart like, poll on Instagram and then also a lot of photos you'll see here. And she's taking photos of the day. So thank you, Chloe. Um, if you want to see all these things in the video, pictures, find out kind of what's going on, depending on how much we update the website, go to this. Lots of information there. And then also, if you want to reach out and chat with me about how you can give away some of your free art supplies here, email there, and we'll chat too. Um, and then also, of course, we're on all kinds of social media, so please, while you're here, tweet about us, um, Instagram about us, like, Hit us up on Facebook, all kinds of stuff, we're everywhere. Um, if you want to like help us out, a great way to do that is to buy one of our posters that we got printed for the first two months. Um, we have our color theme from September, and then from October we have a crossover. And we don't have a monthly poster this time, but we have some really cool stuff coming soon. So stay posted between Fusco and other folks. So um, for $10, if you donate $10 to us, think about it that way, you get a cool poster. And it's just a great deal. Um, last, thank you to the Creative Mornings team. Will you raise your hands if you like helped make this happen? Because okay, a lot more. Um, speaking of, if you want to get involved in your photographer, come chat with me or more come back with Chloe. Because Chloe is leaving us and moving to Seattle. <laughs> and we're really gonna miss her, but we can use with some Photoshop skills, so let me know. Um, now, finally, let's talk about dance. Uh, I'm going to bring up Madison, right there, and, um, sorry guys, no. <laughs> I'm going to bring up Madison, she's going to help me introduce the theme of the speakers this morning. So, um, we were talking about chance and what that means, and um, chance is definitely very perfect to Charleston, but just in general, chance is a really exciting topic. I mean, it's all about taking risks, about going to the edge, about you know, stepping out there and trying something new, and Charleston has a lot of that going on. So, to pass that on, Madison. Right now. 
now in 2005. Like, just think about that. That's like, <laughs> like he's always just five steps ahead of everything, um, and he has always just given me advice to just go for it and just go all out. And I'm really excited for him to be talking to you today. So I'm gonna pass it on to him. Good morning, everybody. I see a lot of familiar over there. I want to say thank you for having me. Um, thank you for choosing me for this topic, because when I heard it, I was like, man, <laughs> have I taken many chances in my life? Yeah. And um, one of the biggest chances that I took and that are, got me here to Charleston. So just kind of want to tell you where I moved from, uh, me and my wife, uh, Andrea. You guys might know her as the uh, Charleston shop curator. She's cool. I love her, mommy. Um, we moved from New York City, and I used to work at a magazine called Stuff Magazine, and I was a fashion editor there, and one day I got laid off, and in the interim we had been visiting Charleston for a while, and every time we came, we're like, man, I don't see any cool stores that we would want to shop at in Charleston. Maybe we should go down there and open up a store one day. So there started the idea, and that was the first biggest chance that me and her had taken. So we, we jumped ship, we left the big city, and we moved to Paradise, and we opened up uh, a store with the, with the name of Bazaar. Um, if you can click that first one there. Oh, look at that guy. <laughs> So, so here's the store. So we come down from New York. We're trying to find a place on Upper King. Like, man, we, we're on a budget here, so we really got to like keep it tight. So here's this tattoo piercing place with lightning bolts and all this stuff. And, and, and there's the dream, you know? That was the big chance. So, you know, we're like, hey, let's, let's, let's take a look. Let's give it a shot. We knew our idea and what we kind of wanted to do. So, we, you know, we, we, we jumped on it. And, you know, one of the questions they asked me is, you know, what does chance mean to me? And, Personally, I mean, I think it's something that we all face every day, and you gotta just go for it, and you know, there's always gonna be a finishing point at the end of it. Something might be good, might be bad, but sometimes if you don't take that chance, you know, you'll never know what the final outcome is, and I definitely think that's part of what makes the world go around, and you know, it's very exciting for what has happened on Upper King, and, and for me and my wife over the past 10 years, can't believe we've been here for 10 years. A lot of growth, a lot of change, um, if you want to hit the next one there. So yeah, there's the front, you know, try scraping that thing off. That was, that, that was something else. Um, so along the way, I've taken more than a couple chin, yeah, look at that. Vintage, that's, that's vintage. I think it says Dusco now. Um, so with having the store, it was kind of a spot to do different events, different parties. Um, I called them pay the rent parties, you know, it was the end of the month, so, hey man, let's get a keg and have a party, man, did we throw it down at, <laughs> at the party, I'm sure, you know, more than a few have gone to some of those, um, but that was a store, it was strictly, you know, streetwear, 50% men's, 50% women's, and uh, a couple things for kids and stuff like that, so we were doing something that was different down here. Um, we also opened up Charleston's first sneaker boutique. That was a hell of a chance. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we kind of hit the last nail as the economy was kind of tanking. So, you know, that one didn't unfortunately work out too well, but it was a, a chance that I took. I was like, dude, I have an idea. Charleston's got the vibe and the people that will probably support this. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go for it. Um, and then let's see what else, you know, another pretty big chance that I take or that I took while having the store was an event, which is a huge undertaking called uh, Culture Clash. I know Adam is very familiar with those, and I'm gonna bless you with one of his awesome videos at the end of all this, and um, and that was a, a heck of a chance. And we'll see a couple of pictures of those here in, uh, in a minute. Let's see what else we got here. That's the inside of the store. Um, yeah, this this was a, a check this out. So let me tell you about this story. So you know. We wanted to do a fashion show, so, so we took a chance. This is the Charleston's first roller skating fashion show. <laughs> that's that's Moo Moo and Sully there. I don't know what they're doing, but regardless, you know, that was something different that we did, and that's kind of how we want to roll, no pun intended. Uh, you know, doing Charleston's first fashion show in Charleston, and, you know, being creative and, and kind of just going out there, trying something new. You know, I, people tell me, man, I've never even roller skated in my life. Well, 
you're going to do just fine. And you know what? They took a chance and they made it as well. So, so it was fun. It's all about having fun, by the way. If you're not having fun, then you're not doing something right. It's all about fun. Let's see what the next surprise is here. Okay, another event that we've done. It's, um, we used to sell products by Kim Robot. And we always wanted to bring people together. One of the fun things I like to do. So we did these money events, and pretty much it was uh, raising money for a cause. Um, and, and we would design these little dolls and then auction them off. So, you know, bringing the arts community together, bringing our customers together, brands together, um, just doing really fun, creative things. Let's see what else. Oh, that's my buddy Dante with one of the money dolls that we've done. And then his uh, wife, who did this really cool rockabilly little uh, money. That was a, another pretty cool little thing. And, you know, there was definitely a lot of funny moments and, you know, great events. I don't, do you guys remember Domain? Is that anybody? Wow, okay, yeah. That, that was a little magazine that was started by Olivia Poole back before she did Art Mag. And me and her uh, collaborated on a fashion show. And this was another, you know, just random, a show out at Folly Beach, uh, bathing suit uh, event, and it was it, it was it was a, a heck of a good time. So <laughs> here was another uh, another event we did. So Charleston's first glow in the dark fashion show. So <laughs> I got my crew together, and we 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 black lit this whole event out. And we took we took a chance on that, and, and you know it ended up pretty well because everybody seemed to have a good time. And those were some of the, uh, the clothes that we used to sell, so you can kind of see the vibe of what Bazaar used to be. You know, these were my, my customers, my friends, my people. Now they're all grown up. There's the wife, she's in the middle. That was, <laughs> that was at, at that event. Joseph, I don't know if you guys know him, but you know, that guy knows how to dance. So, Charlotte, look how young. Everybody's getting big on us. Oh, man. <laughs> that was the grand finale. <laughs> so, and there's, so this is, the, uh, obviously it's Culture Clash, but I don't know if you guys know uh, Scott the Bus, who's one of my closest friends and teammates who actually helped curate this whole thing. And that's my, my son, Mateo, who does not look like that anymore. And uh, this was definitely one huge chance at man, I mean, bringing all these forces together and really bringing Charleston as a whole uh, and it was just something remarkable, man. We did seven of these things. Some of you have shown art in there before, and I know I get the question, when, when are we going to do the next one? And it just looks like times have changed, and it's not as easy to do those events like that anymore. But, man, I'll tell you, that was really a, a really good time, and, and I, I know a bunch of you have gone, and I wish we could relive that. I relive it in my head every now and then um, of how awesome that was. And, you know, some of the chances that that I took, and it taught me that you know sometimes you just gotta go for it and, and see see what happens. You know, just it, it's always gonna end a certain way. Um, so there. Wolf Kid, check out Wolf Kid's art. You know, it's definitely a good collaboration. We made culture class specific ones. We got all kinds of different artists. We got people that were street artists, people that were fine artists and kind of mixed them all together. I kind of got the idea from PS1. I don't know if you guys have been to New York City, but there was a pretty cool event at this uh, gallery called PS1. And man, it was just a good vibe. It was music, it was art, it was just bringing everybody together. And that was my whole reasoning behind bringing Culture Clash or creating it. It's just really, man, let's have a good time because I know Charleston's got the people and you know, let's, let, let's take a chance and make that happen. So those were just some of the chances that I've taken in the last 10 years of, of living here. And, um, you know, to be honest, I couldn't have done it with any, uh, without you guys and the team. And, um, you know, we definitely think we need to keep pushing, keep taking chances, because if you don't, the world won't move. And, you know, I think it's a good thing that, that, that we're, that Charleston's changing so much, and it's honestly so much for the better, that I'm uh, proud to say I'm a Charlestonian, been here 10 years deep, and can't wait to see what the future Thanks. Thanks for having me. That was so much fun. He's such a just asset to the community. I think he's just really brought a lot and been such a trailblazer. But now I'm going to introduce Nikki. You probably know her from Dell's Vibes. 
She's also the daughter of Dell, and they were one of the first like late night restaurants in Upper King slash probably the first one. Um, and I knew her from also working on Upper King, and she's just always been like a sister to me, and she is just full of positivity, and she's one of the strongest people I've ever met, and I'm so excited for her to get to talk to you guys. So I'm just gonna pass it. <laughs>
the next day you realize what you really, really don't know. Does anybody else have those moments? <laughs> but, yeah. Especially if you're in a business owner, one day you're like, oh my god, I'm so awesome. And the next day you're like, I suck. Why am I going to do this? Um, in California, it was a very humbling experience for me. And I came back and realized I had to birth another vision and birth a baby. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> OK, so there is something that entrepreneurs, any type of visionary, this, there's something that we all have in common um, with myself at the moment, and that is babies. Does anybody know why? Yes, it is. It's exactly what it's like. Um, it's about birth. You're birthing the vision. There's something inside of you that, I mean, everybody that's in here right now, there's something inside of you that no one else can give to the world the same way that you can. Um, yeah. And for me, it was my mother who took the chance on saying, I'm going to have this beautiful, beautiful lady. <laughs> If 
you don't have a, a clear picture on what you really want to do, leave it blank. And for me, seeing that wall, it, um, it's still really sentimental because now we're at another phase of business where I've taken a chance again. Um, and it's still more of a, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's a blank canvas, but I'll say that it's another opportunity for me to, um, how can I say this? It's another, you, I never thought of my note cards. That's my problem. <laughs> um, it's another opportunity to me to birth something. Okay, and this was a part of um, the deli. My mom gave me her hand-me-downs. Yay, mother! So, yeah, that's what I first got started. That's my brother, helping take the refrigerator out. <laughs> and this is a part of the beginning of the painting. Um, I think this, for me, um, speaks profoundly. I think I was talking to you about that the other day. Um, in your journey of being an artist or a entrepreneur, a student, if something in your heart doesn't scream, hell yeah, then more than likely it's a hell no. Um, and for me, like seeing this, no one else could see this besides him and I. Um, no one else saw that it was going to be little sun rays, but for me, it was like, Hell yeah, like I'm really doing this. Like it's no longer just um, a cute little idea that's in my head that I'm talking to my friends about just to be inspired, just to say, look what I want to do. It's this is something that I'm really, I'm really about to do this. Charleston really needs this. I really need this. And, and then it started. Smoothies and juices and good vibes. And then I was like, Lord, help me. <laughs> but um, also a lot of times when you are in business or you are doing something, a lot of opportunities come to you that are um, unseen. And the hardest part about taking a risk is how can I make myself feel comfortable? Um, what can I do that will ensure um, satisfaction from the community? What can I do that can make me sleep okay at night knowing that I'm doing something great? What can I do that um, keeps me wanting to do this again the next day? Because a lot of times when you are in business, you get to the point where you're like, why am I doing this? And you probably feel that way four or five times and then you, you still continue to do exactly what you're doing. And I feel like I'm just rambling. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Is anybody doing this? Okay. Um, yeah, but a lot of times as an artist, a, any form of fashion, it's more about your inward journey and not really so much about trying to bring people from the outside and you have to do what is in your heart, no matter if anybody else can see it. Because, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> and then that's a finished replica of that. Um, and it looks simple, I guess, with just seeing like the sun rays, but for me, I find inspiration in everything. So if I walk outside and I'm having a bad day and I see the sun, I'm just like, oh, my God, the sun is so pretty. Because that Confucius said that, that life is simple, but we make everything complicated. So if you go outside and you see a sun ray, or you see um, a person on the street that is having a bad day, and you smile and tell them that, hey, it's going to be okay. Keep your chin up. You know, I don't know if you ever noticed by making somebody else feel good, you yourself feel good also. Um, so that's what I wanted Dell's Vibes to do for the community. As far as I know, has anybody been to Dell's Vibes? Anybody in here? Wow, this is so cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, as far as I know, I would hope that if you didn't see me and you saw some of my employees, that they would feel special. Um, and and I hope you felt the good energy and love that we put inside of our cups. Open. I don't, okay. So that's Devil's Uptown. That's another vision. I know my mom's looking like, I don't like that picture, but it's okay, mom. <laughs> um, but that's a, another vision that my mom um, created in an area of Charleston where no other places were 
making it, um, basically. And we just felt like this side of town needed more healthy options as well. So thus we all. Does anybody have questions? No? Okay. Um, and this is a part of the new vision that we are birthing. Um, if you have seen a construction sign on the window, um, which I get a lot of phone calls and emails and hate messages about, um, it is because we are in the process of birthing something completely different. Um, and because, I don't know, can I say that one? Um, and because I chose to open my mouth about something um, in regards to business. Because sometimes you get to a point where I know everyone wants to think that being a business owner is just great and you're just making boo hoo's amount of money, you're inspiring people and you're happy every single day. But sometimes you have to put your foot down and say what you're not going to allow to occur in your business. And for me, it was um, more of a law issue that I didn't feel like I was being treated right on. So I opened my mouth and we went to a law case on it and we won. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the process of relocating um, as well as watching the Cochris Juice line. So um, that is the bottom bean with carrots, apples, ginger. Carrots, apples, ginger, celery, and I don't know what else actually. <laughs> um, and this is a newspaper clipping from when we first opened Bell's Lives. The popularity of juice for in Charleston. And that's just me. <laughs> Entrepreneurship, whether it's through being a student or it's through taking a chance on love or having a baby or I mean I'm just joking, kind of. <laughs> Oh, 
progress or like going forward with your idea. And you have to be like rooted in reality and be like, okay, these are the factors that I'm working with. You know, I'm waiting on the license, I'm blah blah blah. You know, it's kind of as things kind of go in the air and you know play out in a different way you initially envisioned. Um, how do you guys reshuffle the deck and kind of look at all the elements in play and then you know hit the chalkboard? Like, what's your approach to you know? as you, the, the strategy and the vision, like how do you ongoingly monitor that and be like, okay, culture class is going, the restaurant's going, like, and how do you shuffle the deck when you have to? <laughs> well, it's all about collaboration, man. You just gotta talk with, you know, your teammates and, you know, just kind of lay out a bunch of ideas and just kind of reformulate new ideas and, you know, if there's a roadblock, and try to figure that out. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's really all communication and, and, and obviously working within your parameters, like what is physically possible, what isn't, what do we have the budget for, what do we not have the budget for, and, you know. So, you know, I would say communication and, and, and throwing out those ideas and, and collaborating on that. Success doesn't come to anybody like handing out an invitation saying, here you are, let me get it. You have to really like make it come to pass. I would have never imagined um, coming back from LA ready to launch my cold pressed juices, ready to launch my Chinese herbs, and then realize I'm going into the lawsuit head on, you know? Um, but in the meantime, I mean, nobody knew about it until my doors were shut for construction. But um, at the same time, you still have to find a way to make it work. If it's your passion, if it's hell yes, then you make it happen. If it's a hell no, then you just shut it down and do something else. There, there really is no excuse. It's by any means necessary when it comes to being an entrepreneur. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I loved when I moved out with Nikki to take photos was that she would talk about things like, oh, I really wanted a good juice place, or I really wanted this. And she was like, oh, it didn't exist, so someone had to do it, and I wanted it for myself, so I guess I'm just going to make it happen. And I love that. It's awesome. So if you want something, do it. Because Charles can always do these new things. Um, any other questions? All right, cool. Well, thank you so much for coming. Oh, wait, is that one? Okay. Um, thank you so much for coming. We're so glad you are here. And the next one, I don't think we have a slide for it, but the next one is December 19th. Mark your calendars and I'll tell you where it is. We won't be here. It'll be somewhere really new. So see you there and have a lovely day.